What's up guys, I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. I'm going to show you how I did my animated intro and then uh, you can use what you see here to make your own custom animated intro so that it doesn't look like so much of an RPG Maker game. Um, I'll just show it to you real quick so you know what we're going to be building. So starting off, we've got a little move event. The character's going to move up. We're going to show some um, show some pictures and then animations are going to play when those pictures show. There's two ways to do this, but I'm using a Galv plugin to make it easier and I think you guys should probably get that plugin too. So that's pretty much it. Everything is, uh, it works with the mouse here. So we can go to options and just right click to go back or we can uh, load a save file or we can start a new game and then it's just a simple transfer event. So you're going to actually need two plugins to do this. Um, you're going to need uh, the title script plug, uh, title skip plugin. Let's see. So we're gonna need uh, this DK skip title screen plugin by uh, Dennis. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce your last name. <laughs> that guy. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for this plugin. You can find uh, a link in the description. I'm gonna try to find all these plugins if they're still available. If not, I'll probably rehost them. Free to use. So there you go. Um, really sim uh, simple, simple plugin. Basically, what it does is just simply skips uh, the like the regular loading screen, which is going to let you instead of starting uh, like on a, a starting menu, you just create a map that's going to be your uh, like your starting screen. Oh, the other plugin you're going to need is a Galv one. It's Picture Animations, and all this plugin does is it shows an animation when you play a picture and so it's you just do a script uh, script call and the help file is pretty small really simple plugin nothing super fancy I'll put a link in the description if I could find a link to it uh, gal picture anims DK skip title screen that's it let's create a new map you want your map to be the size of your resolution pretty much so if you're using standard HD which is 1280 by 720 you want 26 by 15 uh, on the dimensions of your map uh, autoplay background music's up to you, all that stuff, but basically you want to include a parallax background image. So whatever image you have for your, uh, your title screen, you need to copy that and paste that into the parallax folder of your, uh, of your game. So that's real easy to do. It's a copy paste job. You know, go into IMG, go to where you have your titles, and right here we'll see the Dungeon Driftwoods. I just copy that, go to the parallax, and just paste it in there. So you can see I have it in here. So that's all you got to do for that. So once we've got that, we're going to create our starting, uh, our player starting position on that map. And we're going to include that title screen as our parallax background. And then here's our auto run event. So right off the bat, you can make this customized to do basically whatever you want. I've got a background sound playing. And then you could also have the background playing uh, from here right on to uh, this right here, background sound. And I don't know why, I, uh, I think it was an afterthought when uh, I just picked the background music and then uh, de decided afterwards to include that. So you can basically eliminate this first play BGS by simply putting that autoplay on the, on the map. Uh, we're gonna do, I'm doing a move route, you don't actually have to do that. You could just have the player disappear or whatever you want, but I'm having the player walk up, very simple move route, and then it shows that he's going up to about right here, and then he's just disappearing. So what's happening is I'm setting the player to uh, speed of three and then moving up, moving up, moving up, turning the transparency on, which is going to make him disappear. So you're not actually transfer transferring the player. It looks like he's entering the dungeon, but you're just turning on the transparency and that's it. And then we're going to set the speed back to four. Um, now, uh, I'm running at 144 frames per second. So I after I teleport to the next map, I just set my speed back to three. So that's why I have it like this. But for you, if you're running at regular 60 FPS, then you just change your speed back to four. And you don't even actually have to adjust your speed. Um, that's all up to you. Wait for completion is something you want to do. Um, you don't want to have anything obstructing the map. But in order to make, make it so that you can move, you'll have to use Yanfly's region restriction plugin. Uh, otherwise, you, you can't do the move event unless you... 
uh, have some sort of tile or edit your tile set so that you can walk on it because a blank tile with nothing on it is as an X by default so you won't be able to walk so if you wait for completion this is somewhere you can hit a, a, a wall and wonder why your program just kind of stopped responding it won't crash but it just won't do anything is because it's trying to move and it can't and you triggered wait for completion so you can see I'm using 77 on my region here because on Yanfly's region restriction plugin, that's the actual uh, number I've decided to allow everything to walk through. So if it's, if it's uh, got a 77 on the region layer, they'll be able to walk on it. So this is going to let my player walk all the way up to this point, And then that's uh, at that point is when transparency is turned on. Moving on to the next thing. I'm going to show a picture. Now you can make these in GIMP, Photoshop, friggin' Paint, whatever you want to do. And what we're doing is we're replacing the, we're just showing a picture and that's all. And we're going to do Yanfly's picture common events so that when we click on it, something happens. So uh, I'll put a link to the description in the description of all the plugins you need. You probably need like four or five to get it working how I have. But you can always use this as a template and change it up to be whatever you want. When you make your image in Photoshop or whatever, just go to, uh, you know, save it into the IMG slash pictures folder so that you can select that as an image. Okay, we've got that. Uh, I'm using the origin as center. And then if you want to have it uh, in the center, you cut the resolution right in half, 640 by 360. I'm scaling it down a little bit to 75 width, 75% height, uh, keeping the opacity 100% and the blend mode to normal. You could change these around to make it work in your game, depending on the size of your picture. It's going to look different, right? So um, this is the, the location that you want. You could even put a little bit of a code in here and have it moving around to to mess with the player. It's just a random thought I had. Like uh, one of those troll games where it's like click start to continue and as you move your mouse around the start button moves around. <laughs> uh, you don't want to do that, probably not. But anyway, <clears throat> to use Galv's uh, to use Galv's plugin, you basically go to tab three and create a script command. And then what you do is you type in this. It's gotta be it's cap sensitive so capital G on Galv dot P I C dot anim and then you select the number of the picture that you want and then the number of the animation you want to play so uh, when the first animation play or when the first picture is called uh, play animation 132 and then these numbers will be different for you depending on what animation or what picture you can see I'm uh, specifically saying picture number one and then this says when picture number one is played use that uh, animation number 132 change it up to to be whatever animation whatever you want it to look like and then that's pretty much it waiting 60 frames so it play we're giving enough time for the animation to finish playing before the next thing uh the next picture shows so on the next we're basically you can cut uh, copy that paste it and then change the number change the image that you're using i'm using continue for the second one and then you can uh change the the y value a little bit you know instead of 360 i'm using 460 and this number you'll have to mess around with it to get it to be spaced out the way you want it's really not that hard but just keep trying and it's not like you can just say i already know right off the bat how it's where it should be you're not going to know you just have to keep trying everything is trial and error so do the same thing here and just change the number one to a two so now we're saying if picture two plays play this animation you can even have the same animation play if you want if you you put some time into a custom one that looks really cool kind of a longer animation but uh, I just got three I've just kind of picked three random ones uh, then we wait again for that animation to finish and then uh, before the next show picture same thing happening here this is for options and then the location of why I just pushed it down another hundred pixels same everything though just number three different picture so forth so on uh, you know you're just gonna copy paste that change the two to a three change the animation to whatever you want it to be we don't need to wait 60 frames really because we are not showing another picture so we don't have to wait for that to, to actually finish playing so the last uh, wait can be a little bit less than the, the first two then we're gonna erase this event otherwise it's gonna do that and 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 it's really not gonna let you do anything else because auto runs will keep going unless you switch to a new page or you erase the event and we're going to just use a race event because if we uh, reload the game, we want it to happen again. All right, so <clears throat> you're going to have to use uh, Yanfly's picture common events. So I have that on right here. And we can see that picture one, when I click it, I'm calling common event number 23. Picture two, when I click it, I'm calling common event 21. And you can edit these values, right? 
Uh, picture three, when I click it, I'm calling common event 24. So 23, 21, 24, and that's all I've really done. And you can pick whichever one when the click is released, when you're held down, <clears throat> and that's it. So we have to call, uh, create that common event that we're calling. So if I go down to 21, uh, 23, and 24, so this is 23. So when you start a new game, those pictures are still going to be there. You're going to be walking around your map and it's still going to say start, continue options. So you need to, uh, on this common event, erase picture one, erase picture two, erase picture three. Uh, play background sound, none. So it gets rid of that dripping sound effect. If whatever, if you're not using a background sound, you don't need to put that. Um, we also need to do our transfer to where the player would normally start when you say new game. So you just transfer to where the regular starting location would be if you didn't do all of this. Wait 15 frames, optional. Show animation on the player, optional. Change transparency, you want to do that. Otherwise, the player is not going to be able to see their own you know, avatar. And that's it for the start game. For the load game, uh, we're doing a simple uh, script call. We go to new, tab three, uh, script command under advanced. And what we're going to do is just push the scene load. So we do scene manager, make sure there's a capital S on scene, a capital M on manager. And we're going dot push, and in parentheses, we're doing capital S on scene, underscore capital L on load. Close the parentheses, do an end line. Very, very simple, very easy. It just changes the scene to the load scene. Here, we don't actually need to erase those pictures because it's still in a different menu. So those, for some reason, it doesn't show those pictures while you're in the menu. A left click will select you know, your thing. Right click will take you back out. You could also use the keyboard when you're in this load menu. And then finally for the options, it's the same thing, except instead of scene underscore load, we're doing scene underscore options. And that's the same thing. It's just pushing to a different scene. Same thing, we don't need to erase pictures for that. Only for when we do the start game where we erase the pictures. And that's pretty much it, really. Um, hopefully you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you uh, are interested in game development. Look at this one more time. Boom, boom, boom. All right, continue. We can use the keyboard here. The next thing I want to add is keyboard uh, ability uh, from here, like a little arrow that goes down, up, and down, up, and down. I'll do that next. And then, can, yeah, we did that. Options, we can go back, click start. There we are. All right, guys, like this video, please. I don't know if it even helps at all, but I'd like to grow the channel. Take everything we can. Comment on this video if you have any questions or if you just want to say hi. That's cool with me. Um, yeah. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.